start in a moment, moment I think. Um, yeah, something. Just grab your card. Derek, how are you doing? Good morning. It's good to have everyone here today. From cropping tobacco in the fields of eastern North Carolina to walking the halls of Congress and serving the residents of the 1st Congressional District, I am most grateful for the opportunity to work for the people of eastern North Carolina and future generations. My grandmother, who raised me, always made sure I had enough to eat. Then, when we experienced tough times, she took food off her plate to share with me. From those days to now, serving as the vice ranking member of the House Agriculture Committee. This shows the American dream is still possible. As the first African American United States Air Force Academy graduate in our nation's history to be elected to serve in the Congress and to be from Eastern North Carolina shows the American dream is still alive and well today. As we're 100 days into the 118th Congress, I rolled up my sleeves to work hard for Eastern North Carolina, rural America, and the American people. After advocating for over a decade for Medicaid expansion in the State Senate, my first act of Congress was to file a resolution expressing support for states to expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act to close that Medicaid coverage gap. Through a bipartisan bill signed into law, now by Governor Cooper, there is light at the end of the tunnel for over 95,000 Eastern North Carolinians trapped in the coverage gap. In addition, over 3,000 jobs are within reach for Eastern North Carolina as we work to save our rural hospitals. As a co-chair of the State Medicaid Expansion Caucus, I will continue to work to help over 2 million Americans who remain trapped in a coverage gap by their states. We are our brothers and sisters keepers. Clearly, we've wasted no time in D.C. I was honored to file the Syracuse Evans Congressional Gold Medal Act. See, before Rosa Parks, there was Syracuse Evans, a private in the Women's Air Corps who boarded a bus for Washington, North Carolina, on leave from Fort Dix. In Roanoke Rapids, a bus driver demanded Miss Evans give up her seat to a Marine. And when she refused, the police took her into custody and she was fined. This legislation recognizes this Eastern North Carolina native for her immense contributions to the civil rights movement. I also filed the Promoting Precision Agriculture Act to ensure our growers have access to cutting-edge precision agriculture technologies such as drones, robotic sensor, sensors, monitors, and more to do what they do best, and that's feeding America. I constantly hear about the barriers to our farmers' success, and I'm proud to introduce this bipartisan bill that will deliver for our farmers in rural America. It's an honor to serve on the House Farm Services Committee as the vice-ranking member 
of the House Subcommittee on Readiness in the 118th Congress. Men and women of our armed services and their families deserve a champion willing to fight for them so we can keep Americans free and secure. And I'm working in D.C. daily to make that a reality. People are sick and tired of a partisan divide in Washington. Instead of extremism, Eastern North Carolinians want us to tackle the issues they discuss at the dinner table. I'm delighted to have co-sponsored 44 bills, 40 of which have bipartisan support. My top priority remains constituents, the people of North Carolina's 1st Congressional District. Over the first 100 days, I've traveled from Elizabeth City to Henderson, from Greenville to Columbia, and everywhere in between. In addition, I've visited all 19 counties at most multiple times. Listening to our constituents is essential. I conducted four town hall meetings as I've been in the community. It has been my honor to meet the community leaders and organizations that consistently go above and beyond. Students, farmers, clergy, demonstrating that you can live the American dream right here in eastern North Carolina. Our office has resolved over 200 constituent cases, including securing passports, helping taxpayers re receive their refunds, connecting veterans to disability benefits, and many other pressing issues that often require coordination and communication with federal agencies. I've taken constituent concerns directly to D.C., such as the concern about the rising cost for our farmers to do business, the need for an extension for spending elementary and secondary school emergency relief, ESSER, funds, allowing more flexibility with JRTC instructors for programs, and especially those in rural communities. I've submitted 15 community projects through the Appropriations Committee across eight counties in the district, including Nash, Vance, Washington, Pasquotank, Pitt, Green, Halifax, and Martin, worth $17.6 million to help residents with high-impact public projects. And with the USDA Undersecretary Tori Small, I announced a $28 million project in Wilson to help farmers transition to clean energy. We're fighting for the East, for a brighter day and a brighter future. To North Carolina's 1st Congressional District, I'm honored to serve as your voice in Congress. And I look forward to the next 100 days working for you, your family, and our communities. And as we look ahead to the next 100 days, my commitment to my constituents will look like this. Fighting to protect Social Security and Medicare. Voting to raise the debt ceiling. Ensuring our children continue getting healthy, nutritious meals. During my district visits to local schools, I've heard from superintendents about the need to extend ESSER deadline, the ESSER deadline, to make project timelines much more feasible for district leaders. I will fight for the recognition that our, our communities deserve, and that includes the hollow opponent. I had the privilege of attending the 58th Annual powwow, and I'm thrilled to announce that I will soon introduce legislation calling for the federal recognition. When it comes to border security, I will make it a priority to travel to the southern border to see the challenges for myself. I will be working to provide additional housing assistance for our seniors. 13 of the first congressional district's 19 counties are economically distressed. We need help to increase workforce availability 
invest in critical infrastructure needs, promote business innovation and access to capital, and so much more. This is my focus for the next 100 days. We must also promote good paying jobs and infrastructure in the East. We must support broadband, the global transport, prioritizing the needs of the United States Coast Guard Elizabeth City and infrastructure needs of our airports through the FAA reauthorization. As a member of the House Armed Services Committee, I will soon be joining my colleagues in moving the National Defense Authorization Act in the next 100 days. Through the work on this committee, I will continue to fight for ROTC programs and expanding JROTC programs in rural communities and suicide prevention in the ranks of our military. Members cannot go overseas and serve our country to come back and take their own lives. And we will continue to work to expand the basic needs allowance for military families who experience food insecurity. I commend Elizabeth City State University for being North Carolina's only four-year aviation sciences program, or having that program. And I believe we can soar even higher into the next level by activating a space, an Air Force and Space Force ROTC detachment on campus. I will work with the university to ensure the next generation of Eastern North Carolinians have the opportunity to achieve the American dream, even in the air and space. I'm proud to represent over 40,000 veterans in North Carolina's first district. I thank them for their service and sacrifice to our country. That is why I will soon introduce a package of bills that looks after the health of our veterans and provides them with the resources to help start small businesses in the communities they serve. As a vice ranking member of the House Agriculture Committee, I'm laser focused on the 2023 Farm Bill. The Farm Bill is a legislative package passed every five years that directly impacts North Carolina's rural communities, food security, uh, farm programs, crop insurance, and so much more are included in the Farm Bill. Agriculture is North Carolina's largest industry and a cornerstone of rural North Carolina, creating an economic impact of more than $96 billion each year, supporting 728,000 jobs across the state. There's at least 5,457 agriculture workers in the first district alone. We need the real common sense solutions to the challenges farmers and rural communities face every day. That is why I'm holding multiple Farm Bill listening sessions to hear from farmers in our rural communities on the issues that matter most to them. And we are here to serve you. That's the message to the First District. We're here to serve you. That's why we will soon plan to officially open our Greenville District office and begin providing mobile office hours across the district. I've gone out of the, across the community and I've heard from so many constituents. The concerns they've raised will serve as my guide for the next 100 days as we move forward. I want to make clear if there's anyone out there who needs a helping hand as they're trying to sort through life and especially live the American dream here in the East, give us a call. If we can help, 252-997-9600. That's the number, 252-997-9600, that you can call here for the 1st Congressional District. Working for Eastern North Carolina and future generations is a genuine honor, and I thank the residents of our district. Answer any questions? Certainly, the um, talks are still going on with the debt ceiling, the deadline for that. Do you have any thoughts on where that's going, what people can expect right now? Yeah, I would love to see um, leadership um, work out 
uh, deal. Um, it is very clear, um, as I indicated earlier in my, in my release, uh, my statement that um, you know, we need to, um, as we have historically, you know, had a vote to increase um, um, the debt ceiling. We need to pay, you know, what we already made obligations towards. I'm also um, glad to share that I'm a member of the Problem Solvers Caucus. Uh, the Problem Solvers Caucus um, is a bipartisan group. Equal number of Republicans and Democrats are members of this group. Uh, and uh, we have recently released a framework uh, for how we may look at dealing with the debt ceiling. Um, I voted in support of that framework, and essentially um, what that would do is it would temporarily suspend the debt ceiling to the end of the year. We will put in place an independent um, fiscal commission to review um, where we are. Because right now, and you know, we have to be clear, um, we're sitting on a little over $31 trillion uh, in terms of our national deficit. Um, our, I'm sorry, the national debt. Our deficits are uh, increasing, and, and we really need to you know, look at the most fiscal um, steps that we can take um, while we're continuing to um, make sure that we're providing um, services that are needed by um, Americans. So uh, we will put it would put that independent commission in place. Um, they would have essentially a year to work on it, report back to the Congress the following February, and notice the timeline, and, and we're trying to remove the politics out of the process, um, because that would occur during the presidential election year, and then they would report back the following February, um, you know, after a new, uh, the next administration is actually sworn in. Um, and it would then require an up and down vote in agreement to that when we go ahead um, and move forward with um, vote, a vote now to increase the debt ceiling. So that's the broad, the gist of the framework um, that a, a group of centrists have actually um, you know, put out there. Um, but again, our position is clear and allowing the leadership, um, the president, House Speaker, um, the majority, uh, minority leader to work to those deals. Well, President Biden has come down saying he might be running for election, a re-election. Thoughts on that today? Well, I think you know me well enough. We've seen each other. We've been around each other long enough. I'm a staunch fighter for Houston, North Carolina. That's what what gets me up early and keeps me up late. I'm supporting anyone who's going to um, bring forth what I believe um, or um, issues and uh, and deliver for Houston, North Carolina. Um, I believe that President Biden and the administration, you know, there have been clear um, uh, deliver deliverables for the East. Um, when I think about, you know, getting us through COVID, um, as I was talking about earlier, ESSER, infrastructure, um, those are real deliverables, I believe, for Houston North Carolinians. Um, but I want to be clear, too, um, you know, I'm, I'm supporting what I believe um, we can, you know, get the deliverables for the East, and uh, I've seen that, um, but I want to be very clear and plain spoken. I've not always agreed with the President, and you've probably seen it. Most recently, it's not, you know, I would think the most common practice that I would think for just a few months in it with the vote to override the, the veto on Lotus. We're standing with our farmers. That's what that is about for me. Um, so, I would just like to add, um, I want to thank you for all you have done, all you're going to do. Uh, I've been following you over the years, and I'm just proud of where you come from and where you are now. And I just love it, being able, um, being a young 60-year-old man, being able to support a young brother like you, several years behind me. And it, I hope young folk um, look at your hard work, what it takes to get to where, they, where you are, and I trust that you will do whatever you need to do, uh, keeping in mind the uh, national, local, 
and state Democratic Party. So as long as you do that, we'll be okay. Um, some questions, you know, hey, they'll come. But I think you explained it well, what you have done. And um, it's a little early, so I want you to get on the plane and go back to D.C. <laughs> and you'll come back and give us another report at some point in time. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I will first say that I typically fly. Um, you're absolutely right. But to get this done today, we're driving back. You're driving back. Like, okay, all right. <laughs> um, but one thing I'm most passionate about here is our young people and young professionals in the East. Um, what we know is there is a tale of two stories of your client. There's a North client that's growing, one that's stagnant, there's one that's prospering, there's one that's still, you know, you know, experiencing slug, a sluggish economy, so to speak. Yeah. When I think about just looking at this in the framework of growth, how we're growing, people are loading U-Hauls every day coming into the state because we are a great state, without a doubt. But when we look at eastern North Carolina, when we look at this last redistricting, um, as we went from 13 to 14 congressional districts, because the population fastest growing, one of the fastest growing states in the nation, it was just this grouping in the east where we saw so much loss of population. Um, we went from uh, 17 of the 19 counties lost population. We went from, in this congressional district, 15 counties to now 19 because of that to backfill to make the district balance out. I'm saying all this to say young people are leaving at a rapid rate. That's why we've been on the Live the Dream Down East tour. That's why we're out fighting. This is about the future of Eastern North Carolina, and we have to look at ways to continue to fight for our young people so they can live the American dream right here in Eastern North Carolina. So thank you for that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. We're going to have to head down well, the road. I'm going to get the bad guy and get him back for votes. Thanks, y'all. Good to see you. You too. Thank, thank you, sir. You so